So more and more artists are growing up with computers. So people are using computers more as their primary medium of creation. Uh, so it opens up some possibilities, but like with text tools, uh, things are still kind of stuck uh, using maybe black and white, uh, as beautiful as uh, black and white font designs can be. Uh, Many text tools do not consider text as readable elements themselves. It is kind of an offshoot of things. Uh, and uh, as artists start using tools, uh, I know it's been my experience that uh, you always want to, as an artist, you want to explore things kind of off the beaten trail. Uh, so, like on, on this slide, for instance, uh, if you're walking along this trail out here, sometimes you want to just kind of go right up to the edge and, and see what's going on there. Uh, sometimes I don't think anything very useful. Uh, <laughs> But you never know, you might remember that you've got a paraglider slapped to your back or something, and uh, you might find some way to, to navigate some avenue that you're going. Uh, sometimes you can get commissions. Uh, <laughs> commissions often have extra strings attached, so uh, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Uh, so uh, here's some samples of three fonts uh, historically, and there's quite a wide variety of, of fonts manipulation. Uh, so things are not necessarily just uh, it's gonna come up. They're not just an outline, it's like these crazy designs. Or things like this, a lot of signs were uh, quite worked up uh, with multiple colors. Uh, multiple colored fonts are not really well supported. The last several years, I've uh, into LGM and particularly the color font JS. Uh, it, it's kind of, it's always, I, I kind of sucked in some ideas by osmosis. Uh, people always ask, well, how come Layout doesn't have text, uh, text tools? And, uh, they must talk to the rest. Uh, so I finally said, okay, uh, I just switched my renderer to Cairo, so now it's actually possible to do text. So I thought, okay, I'll just make a little, just a simple little text tool. And that'll be it. I won't need anything more than that ever, of course. Uh, so just like start thinking about it and think, well, if I just make a, a little caption tool, uh, so like that would be one category of text manipulation where you just need one or two lines of things. Uh, it's usually like one font. Uh, you don't need floating or anything like that. Uh, so I thought, okay, I'll just do a, a caption tool. I call it. So Inkscape does pretty good with that. It's pretty clean. You just click down, you can type text. No fuss. Uh, there are some ways it could be improved, though, I think. Pardon my spelling. Um, so, like, this would be a, a, an easy way to make labels. Uh, so, you, you just click down anywhere, like, like an escape, just type, and it's expected. And if you click down it's just in random places, then uh, it doesn't produce a lot of empty objects, so it's pretty convenient. Uh, I, however, I, when I was using text in Inkscape, often I'll type something, then I want to quickly move it to somewhere else to align it with something else. Um, so to have a, an outline around it where you can just grab the outline and move it around, or to change the font size, there's just extra little doodads you can pull and push on the side, as well as for line spacing. Uh, also on the edges, if you want to rotate. Yeah. And there's also alignment. Uh, like if you want to use if you want to use uh, a text layout from a script, for instance, uh, sometimes you want to locate it close to an anchor point. So like this red dot would be an anchor point, and then you can uh, align it to that thing. So if you want to automate something, it's easy to control. Uh, uh, one pet peeve of line is that most software use left, right, and center as alignment points, and only left, right, and center. It's very difficult to get intermediate values, but if you do anything like with animation or movement or something like that, the discrete points like that are kind of irritating too. Ooh. So just by holding a modifier, I shift it around, you can get any other points in between. Let's see. That's the basis of the 
caption tool. Right, the other categories of text editing would be blue text and text on a tab. Uh, and so far, this is all just single color black and white text. And I'll get to color text in a second. Uh, so, uh, one of the problems with blue text is that it's difficult to coordinate where things actually flow. Uh, so, I offer a solution where it's, it's just a lot more obvious. Uh, so, like, uh, I don't have an implementing like that, but so say you have a caption like that and you want to flow it into something on Inkscape or Sprite, right? so you have to select the text and then select this other thing and then select this menu option for if you happen to the, the shortcut and that connects them. But it's, it, it seems like it would be much more intuitive to have a little blob or something to just pull that and then have it instantly have your cursor transform into a, a text indicator. Uh, so, like, you hover over something and these, these purple lines would appear. And you can click on that and then drag over and then link up things like that. Uh, another problem with flow text is that it's difficult to uh, jump from one thing to the next. If you have a big magazine layout, it's very easy to get lost uh, for where things link up. So I guess has the little arrows that show where things are linked, uh, but it's, it's usually like a really thin arrow where it's uh, often, if something's like many pages down, it's quite difficult to, to jump to somewhere reasonable. So I envision extra little things on the side, like another arrow where you click on the arrow and uh, be able to select what section you want to jump through. I assume we have that implemented by now, but it's not good. One of my many implemented tools. Uh, another issue for flow text is if you want to do text on path, uh, like for instance, if you have an engraver object where it's just a, you know, if they have a whole bunch of lines, uh, or it's in Inkscape for, for SVG files, you have a path, uh, but if you have a lot of subpaths, it's not really clear how the text is going to flow on those paths. So you might have visually lines arranged like that, but uh, the order that the text is going to be clicked is going to jump all around and it's not going to make a lot of sense. Uh, so I in the process of implementing a way to select different lines. Uh, so you just pick somewhere and then drag down, and wherever it's going, that's going to determine where the text is going to flow. Uh, one more thing that's on my to-do list that I didn't quite <coughs> implement. Uh, so just like uh, historically, people were, uh, it was uh, slightly harder to make uh, color text. You have to do different layers. Uh, but with computers, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, like Just like with open type features, it's not clear if people don't do more stuff like that because it's not really accessible or if people just don't, are not interested in it. If it was immediately accessible, maybe it would be easier to just do stuff like that. So let's see if this will work now. So for font selection, uh, I have a, an option for layers. So like if I want to make this text, uh, Uh, there's three separate layers here. Uh, I, another thing is I'm almost done being able to do open type SVG fonts, where it's an open type font, but each grip is defined by SVG. But I didn't quite get there. Instead, right now I have to do each layer of color in a font to a different file. So like right now, if there's just a background color uh, and a foreground, but if you get the layers, then you can add different layers to the font. So if I want that one to be Let's say that another layer is going to do that. Another layer is going to do that. So now they're all this color, but I just I changed the color for those. And I, when you do it man, such so manually like this, it's difficult to coordinate what's on what. So you can just I, rearrange until it actually makes sense. Then I, if that works for any number of layers, I, there it's I, you can select and everything like that. And it works hopefully like one would expect it to. Uh, in terms of this sort of uh, font design, I, I guess that Microsoft has a method where it's uh, single color layers like that in open type, uh, but it's not really widely supported outside of Microsoft apparently. I could be wrong about that. It's, uh, there's several different competing ways to do color fonts and they're all quite different. Uh, the SVG fonts are currently only supported somewhat in uh, Firefox and like nowhere else. Uh, and 
things. There's that about the character selection thing here. So uh, this character rendering is, I, I built it in at the base part of the font rendering. Supposedly, student free type will be able to support the layered uh, colors in fonts, uh, but it's not in the stable quite yet, as far as I understand. But there's no plans for like, uh, easy access to the SVG parts if you do open type SVG. One of the concerns, uh, like in America, uh, there's no accents on the keyboard. Uh, unlike like French keyboards, for instance, the American keyboards have no crazy French accents. Uh, so like, uh, so I, I have kind of a workaround, so you just type two things and basic inputs. Of course, that font doesn't actually have that character. So if it did, let's see, it has that possibility. So you can just type two characters and then be like, Color fonts available, so uh, I rendered one, or I built one in Blender. Uh, it's very difficult to make color fonts uh, just because it's not a light standard, particularly. Um, so, this is the process that I went through to make a color font. Uh, so, it's modeled in Blender, uh, then I did a render of it. Oops. So, with an orthographic camera. <laughs> So I kind of envision this as to be used in like a video game where you run a rock across the rooftops, maybe you get some points for spelling words correctly or something. <laughs> so then I took that render into GIMP and then like sheared it so that you get the uh, more common sort of perspective. Uh, then I took that sheared image into Inkscape and then traced it via several colors. Uh, and then there was no easy way to guillotine that stuff. Uh, so I need my own uh, guillotine to take that chart and, and map it all into to glyphs. So I took uh, those separate SVG files uh, and then use TTX to compile that using a, a TTX template, uh, which I, I still don't really understand, so it doesn't quite work in Firefox for some reason, but it, it, it worked like a week ago. It just upgraded and now it doesn't work. I don't know. That's, uh, this would be the top I had when it was working. Is TTX, and then the final stage is you finally have that, you finally have an open type SVG font. So, the, the last thing I wanted to show is uh, text on path options. Um, so, like on Inkscape, uh, so without putting spaces at the front of your text, sometimes it's difficult to get things to space properly. Uh, but if you have extra things on top like that, just click and drag and then you can place it however you like. Uh, or sometimes you, know, you want to put text around an existing object, but you don't want to destroy that object. Um, so you, you want that path to stay there, but you don't want it to, you want it to map to a different path. So like if you just click and drag the, the baseline, sometimes that's easier. Uh, and another thing that's I would, is sometimes useful for artistic purposes, again, dealing with text as a visual element, Rather than an offshoot of like font design. I mean, it's, it's like fonts were created over 10,000 years of committee meetings, I guess. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, oops. <laughs> This uh, as a visual element, well, you can switch things as visual elements. So, what happens if you take a variable with line like that and use the envelope for the path? And as you move it around, you can <laughs> So, that, that, that's my, my offerings for different ways to do it. Thank you. <laughs> that would be a question. Just, Microsoft has indicated they are going to support SVG overtime fonts during the summer. All right. All right. I need to open my font in something other than Firefox then. By all means, there's no choices. Uh, one question. Uh, 
Um, was there a reason why you implemented your um, multiple keys to create um, accents instead of using the com composite key uh, fe features in, say, the zone? I, mean, I think that just the composite key should work. However, on most American keyboards, there is no composite key, so you kind of have to make it. And being a, being a dumb American, I gotta fake a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the win key is for. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. If nobody else has one. Um, you're going a little fast and I might not have noticed exactly or not have put exactly what would you using in glyphs for in the process of building your your traumatic plot. What was I using? Did you say you use glyphs? No, uh, it's all all pretty neat stuff. Okay, so that, that was That's, confusing to me, so I just yeah, started. I took a, ch a chart and then I made my own script to take that <coughs> this that takes over a chart and chop it up into individual glyphs. So okay. it, it just makes a whole slew of individual clip files, which are then pulled in and compiled to the TTX format, gotcha. which is then compiled into the program. Okay, thanks. So thanks again, Tom.